on this. So we, we're recording this. Um, so I'll send out the recording, hopefully later on today or tomorrow. Uh, we're doing another webinar this evening, which is more for people whose, whose time zone is better for that. So what I'll probably do is judge which one's the best recording um, and then send that out. Maybe tomorrow. It's our summer party tomorrow. So it might not go out tomorrow, but yeah, I'll try, I'll try and do it tonight. Okay, cool. So let me first share my screen. Let's do, actually, let me just do my whole desktop. Okay. Um, can someone see my, can someone just let me know if they can see my screen? Okay. I can see it. You can see it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Right. Okay. So let's get started then. I'm going to present mode. Okay. So very simply, site migration is how to not lose traffic. Um, that's the key thing, right? You want to move website. You've got redesigns to do, a rebrand things to do. There's so much to think about. The last thing you want to think about is, oh no, I could actually be jeopardizing, you know, all of my SEO traffic that I've, you know, hard fought to to kind of to gain over however long, right? It's, it's a frustration, but it really is important that you do think about the SEO side whenever you're doing any kind of migration. Um, and I think probably first off, maybe what some people here might be asking themselves is, is mine a migration? Actually, what, what determines a migration? And there's lots of things really that can count as a migration where you need to think about the processes and steps I'm going to run through in this webinar. So the first is just moving to a new domain, right? So um, like moving from a .tv to a .com, which is changing the, changing the kind of the end, the TLD, I guess. Um, or you could be completely rebranding it, right? Where it's, you know, we, if we change from hike to, I'm trying to think of another word. I've got a kettle in front of me, hike to kettle, like whatever it may be, right? You can change in the name. That's a new domain name, right? So that's, that's probably the, the most common form of migration. Secondly, is when you're switching a CMS. So you, you're switching from your website or just moving to another website. So you might be moving from WordPress to Wix or Squarespace, or you might just be redesigning. You might have um, a web designer that's just redesigning it, right? So you're, just, you're doing that. Um, so all of those would, would count as migrations because you're essentially changing the website structure. You're changing the fundamental parts of the website that search engines look at. Um, and then also the fourth one I've got there is www.https. So people don't really think about this, but it's a form of migration. If you move from some people, their website might be like, we used to be www.hikeseo.co. And then we changed it to just hikeseo.co, right? A lot of people strip out the Ws. So if you're doing that, that's a form of migration. Um, uh, and same with HT, if you're moving from HTTP to HTTPS, that's a form of migration as well. Um, and depending on which one you fall into there, you might be looking at and going, yeah, I'm, I'm one or I'm two or I'm three or I'm one, two, I'm three, right? Then the steps that are gonna follow might not apply for all of it, but it, most of them will apply. So I'd still look at it and go, okay, which ones are relevant for me? And if, you, you know, if you're not sure, then just ask the questions we're going along, right? I don't want anyone here to be unsure because you know, it can be quite complicated, let's say, uh, lots of different moving parts. So bit of a kind of like scare tactic at the beginning here. Um, doing an SEO, doing a migration and thinking about SEO is so important because if you don't, this can happen. And this might feel like I'm exaggerating, but I've been, I've done so many, having been doing SEO for like 12 years now, um, having been part of so many migrations, either been part of or actually retrospectively looking at ones, right? Where clients have come to me or to high core and the agency goes to work and said, oh, my traffic's all gone. And you look in their GA and you see this. And you can almost immediately, I can just spot, I go, that's a migration that's gone wrong. You know, and it, it can, it absolutely does happen. Um, so it's really, really important um, that you think about SEO during the migration period because, you know, there's, <laughs> there's no point having a lovely new website with new design or a new branding if you're just going to lose 90, 95% of your traffic because hardly anyone's going to see it, right? So yeah, it's just to make everyone aware the impact because I have like you do see some crazy comments online where it's typically from maybe some web developers 
he'll be like, oh, you don't have to worry about migrate doing the usual steps for migrating when you move to a website because Google just knows what to do these days. Google knows how to handle it. So you just need to move to a new website. Don't worry about redirects. Don't worry about all that stuff because Google knows what to do. It's just not the case. It's not the case at all. It's very, very complicated. Google doesn't know what to do unless you tell it. And that's why Google got their own guides, which we'll come to at the end. So yeah, hopefully that's enough of me trying to scare everyone. Um, so let's move on. So I think before we get started though, the best tip I can give is, uh, is just to get started as early as possible. So that's why I kind of asked the question, well, what's the kind of the time scales uh, before, you know, the people here that are migrating their websites? Because again, having worked on lots and lots of migrations in the past, SEO tends to be an afterthought or the very last thought before going live. It's like, oh, what about our SEO? Do we need to do anything there when it comes to migrating? And, and I'll be called in with about three or four days, <laughs> right? Or sometimes they, they won't even tell us. And then you'll just see a new website on live and you'll be like, oh my God, <laughs> I've now got to do the whole SEO migration bit after the website's gone live. And it can just take so long, like even the most simple migrations, right? You think, oh, it's a tiny website, hardly doing anything. There might, there, there are still things that take a long time and there might be things that will take even longer that you don't know until you start the process. So yeah, as early as possible, like, uh, I mean, as I guess as a general rule of thumb, a guide like four to six weeks, start this process before you know it's going live. Because what's the harm in starting early? You know, if everything goes smoothly, brilliantly. But if anything crops up, you're like, actually, there's a load of work for us to do, then at least you have the time to do it, right? So there's, there's four parts to a migration that are very important, um, which I'm going to go through today. So the first, redirect mapping. The second, content migration. The third, new Google properties, what to do there. And then fourth, and finally, what to do after the website's gone live, right? So... The website's gone live. You can't just go, right, my, my work here is done. You need to be doing certain audits, certain steps to make sure that, yeah, you've still maintained your SEO traffic. Right? If there is anything wrong, you've got the time to get there and fix it. Okay, so the first bit we're going to go through is redirect mapping. Um, I tried to find a meme of like, just something to show how important this was, because this is the most important thing. And I saw Maximus, um, and I thought, who better than Max was like, it, this, this really is the most important bit. And if there's one thing that I want everyone to take away from today, when it comes to migrations, because it's a bit of an 80 20 rule, right? In a way, you know, if we go up here, all of this stuff, the, the thing that's really going to impact your success post migration, 80% of it's going to be your redirect mapping. Like that redirect mapping, redirect mapping, redirect mapping. That is just the most important thing. And whenever I've seen a failed migration, 99 times out of 100, it is because um, it's because they've not completed the redirect mapping. Um, so let's go through how to do redirect mapping. And I guess actually just very, very quickly, people be like, going, what's redirect mapping, Andy, right? Um, so redirect mapping is redirecting your old URLs to your new URLs. So if you're changing domain, right? Let's say we were going from hike to hikeseo.co to ketoseo.co, right? We want every single URL, like our about us page, our contact us page, our services pages, to redirect from the old domain to the new domain. So that when Google or users try to go to any of those old URLs, they're 301 redirected. And 301 is the key here, right? Because it's permanent. The, the difference between a 301 and a 302 redirect is that you're telling Google, hey, a 301 redirect is permanent. You know, this isn't a temporary thing, right? So just think 301 redirects. Um, you want a 301 redirect, all of those old URLs to the, from the old URL to the new URL. And the reason that's super important when it comes to SEO is what that means is all the SEO value that the old website and the old URLs have, we passed over to the new URLs. Uh, and what you'll often see is if this isn't done, your traffic drops because you're essentially starting SEO again, right? Google's going to your new site and it's going, I've got all these new URLs. Okay, they've got nice content and all of that, but there's no SEO strength behind them because I've just discovered them for the first time is what Google's thinking. Whereas you put those three on redirects, it goes, oh, this is new URL. Oh, but wait a minute, this is the old URL. This is the, 
This is the new version of the old URL. So what I'm, what I'm going to do, Google's going to move over all the SEO value, which means it can still rank. So that's why it's so, so, so important. The key with redirect mapping is to get a full list of all your URLs. Because what people think is, I'll just go to my website, I'll maybe log into the CMS, log into WordPress, log into uh, Squarespace, Wix, whatever it may be, Shopify, and look at all my pages and go, what's my main pages? And I'll just redirect them. Right, because they're my main pages, I'll redirect them. Um, and that will then mean that I'll keep all my SEO. I've, I've ticked off my three or Andy will be happy. I've done all my redirects. Um, I won't be happy. Um, because actually, you need to redirect everything, not just your main pages, all of your secondary pages, all of your pages that you think no one cares about, all of the pages that you think Google doesn't care about, all the every single page you have to redirect, right? You have to redirect everything. So that Google sees this as a seamless switch from the old site to the new site. Don't give Google a reason to not rank your website. So the most important thing is now that I've told you how to redirect everything, you have to get a full list of all your URLs, right? And that, it, this is the kind of the difficult bit um, because you'll need to go through a pretty intense process to grab all of these. And if you've got a massive website, you know, e-commerce, it's gonna take a long time, which is again, this is why the four to six week rule um, of doing it so first off screaming frog uh, <laughs> might sound like a very very strange phrase if you've never heard of screaming frog screaming frog is um an seo tool right it's obviously hikes an seo tool that we built for you know people who aren't super super experts at seo screaming frog is typically used by people who are super super experts at seo right it's it's your bare bones stripped back seo crawling tool so what you do is you go into Screaming Frog, um, you put in your URL, and it crawls your website. A little bit like Hike will crawl your website, but Screaming Frog does it at like a really high level. And it crawls, um, crawls your website and brings back all your URLs. And then you can go, great, okay, so this is a good starting point. So I actually just ran, uh, here we go. Hopefully you guys can see. Can someone just say a yes if they can see Screaming Frog app application in front? Yes. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Matt. Okay, cool. So it looks like this. It looks like a very scary tool. and it, it isn't. Essentially, all it does is you plug in your URL at the top. So I put in Hike SEO, press start, and it brings me back a list of every URL that is crawled on the website, right? So really, really important. Now, this is my starting base. I'm like, right, okay, here's all the URLs I need to read out. And the Hike website isn't a particularly big website, right? But if you have a look, I mean, Screaming Frogs found... 400 URLs. So that's essentially 400 redirects I need to plan, I need to map. Um, and don't forget about images. This is something people often forget about when they're doing their redirects. They forget to redirect images. Um, image URLs like this, it can, they can accumulate SEO value. You actually find that sometimes you can get backlinks to your images because a certain website is linked to your image, right? And also your images can rank in Google image search and, and drive traffic. So if you don't read our end, you're gonna lose all of that as well. So screaming frog, um, I think maybe at a certain point in the future, I might write, run some kind of training session on kind of the basics of using screaming frog. Um, but yeah, very important. If anyone's got any questions, there'll be guides out there, right? On how to use it. It's free up to 500 pages. So obviously a hike it's fine. So for the majority of websites, it's free. It doesn't cost anything. But yeah, if anyone's got any questions and they're like, Andy, I don't know how to use screaming frog then let us know kind of afterwards, uh, drop us an email, uh, use the live chat and hike. I'm sure we can help you out. But this is a great place first to get started in grabbing a, a, a list of your current URLs on your website. So get those uh, URLs. Like I say there, I've got 400. So I'm like, right, okay, my starting point. I've got 400 URLs. I need to think about redirecting. Let's go back to here. Okay. Next, Google Analytics. So a next place to go to grab URLs. Because Screaming Frog isn't going to give you everything. You need to think, you need to, you need to do all of these steps. Go to Google Analytics, right? Go to organic traffic and go to landing pages and set your date range to the last six months. So again, I think I'm going to have to exit this. Uh, I might sleep like this for a bit. So analytics, acquisition, all traffic, channels, click on organic search. Set your date range to at least six months. What Google's going to, what analytics is going to give you then is a list of all the URLs. 
So we've got 209. All the URLs that have gained traffic in the last six months. So this is really important, right? Because these are the pages that Google are actually sending um, traffic to. So you want to export all of these URLs and add them to your list. What you might find is that that list of screaming frog URLs, like we had 400, right? Might contain these 209. You know, if you think of a Venn diagram, they might fit on top of each other perfectly, but they might not. There might be some in here that Screamer Frog didn't pick up. And that's why this process is so important. Um, next, so you've done Screamer Frog, you've done Google Analytics, Search Console. We're not, it's not finished just yet. So over to Search Console, repeat the process. Two, two ways you can do it in Search Console. Under here, under index, go to coverage. Actually, let me just show you because it's not the most obvious thing. You've got this indexed tab here, right? If you scroll down and click here, view data about index pages, it's then gonna give you, or it should give you, it says examples, but for us guys, it gives you every URL. It gives you every URL that it has indexed at the moment on the website. So it's saying 202. So also you can start to see at this point, the discrepancies, right? You've got Screaming Frog's got 400. You've got Analytics has got 250. You've got Search Console's, Search Console's got 202. This is kind of what happens. And this is why you need to do all of these, all of these steps, because you need to grab as big a list of URLs as possible. Another way that you can grab URLs from Search Console, go to coverage, but go to performance, which is up here on the left, if you didn't see that. Um, set your date range to last six months. I won't press apply because I want it to load. Um, and then go to your pages tab here. And then, so this is 211. You can see the, the numbers differ all the time, right? And then grab all of these URLs, right? And what you're doing now, you create an even bigger list. Then finally do a site search in Google. So this is like my favorite SEO, my favorite SEO tool of all time, really. It's not really a tool, but a trick tactic is using the site search in Google. So go to Google, search site colon your domain to see a list of index URLs. So I've done this over here. So I've gone to Google, as you can see, I've put site followed by a colon followed by my website. It's a hikeseo.co. And what this essentially does, if you've not done this before, is you're telling Google to bring back a list of all the URLs it has in its index for hikeseo.co. Now you can see here, there's 348 results. Right, that's why this is so important. And frustrating that you have to do all these steps. But if we just went by the 200 number, we'd be missing out on the potential 150 URLs that Google does have in its index um, that we'd lose SEO value from. And that could mean a good, a successful migration and a failed migration. Honestly, it's that sensitive. Um, so yeah, so you do this here, you get a list of all the URLs and you can go page by page find a way to grab them all. I use, I use a Chrome extension called Link Clump. Um, not a great name, but essentially what it allows you to do is, um, I don't know how to do it, but it allows you to grab loads of URLs from a single page that like you drag, um, and then it copies it onto your clipboard. So you can do 10 at a time, or you can go into tools, extend your results to 100 per page, and then you can grab like 100 per time. So there's ways to do it that's a little bit quicker. But then that is pretty much gonna give you a big, huge Google sheet list of all your URLs, right? So you've got URLs from Screen Frog, URLs from Analytics, URLs from Search Console, URLs from the site search, got this big list of URLs, remove your duplicates, and then you'll have a final list of URLs. Um, so I've got a few messages in the chat here. Uh, let's have a quick look, there's anything here. Uh, Fred, what happens if our client hasn't got Google Analytics installed and neither Google Search Console? Yeah, Fred, if, if that's the case, you, you can't do steps two and three, right? You're just going to have to do step one and step four because you can't do step two and three. But, you know, like I showed you, they're all going to give you a list of URLs. You know, hopefully by doing one and four, you'll get 90 plus percent of the URLs, right? You might get 100 percent. Who knows? The reason I say about doing all four is just because it gives you, it's the safest thing to do. Um, any questions on any of this? Because I know that I've gone quite quickly through this. And this is so important. Um, feel free to just either drop it down in the chat or actually just, just say it out loud. If you've got any questions on this bit before we move on. I, I do have one. Um, <laughs> our client has quite an extensive blog on their original website. There's about 230 articles um, yeah. 
on there. Now, they're, they're only planning, they're only requesting that we bring across about 30 of those. So that's 200 that are just going to vanish in the world. So is there, I mean, we, we, we don't really have the, the agreed budget to rebuild 230 blog articles. So it, it's not really an option for us. But is there anything, what would we do in that case? Because we can't redirect the URL to a new one because there isn't a new one. So what would you do with the redirects? Yeah, okay, cool. We, we're gonna come on to content in the next section, but to answer your question around wh where would you, because that's a really good question actually, and I didn't, didn't cover this here. What if you haven't got an equivalent page to redirect to, right? You think about it as like a, um, if you haven't got an equivalent page, think of a continuum. Like think of the worst, the least most relevant page to the page that you're redirecting from, you know, so let's say it's a blog post, you know, the least most relevant page on the website would probably be like your contact us page or about us page. And then think of that continuum to the other side, which is the most uh, similar page. So least similar and the most similar page. So the most similar page would be uh, a, a duplicate. Like if there is a one on the next website, then you'd be like, great, redirect that. But there isn't gonna be, right? So then take a step further along the continuum go, okay, what's the next most similar page? Is there another blog post which covers it, you know, covers the topic in fairly good detail, right? Even if it's not the exact same blog post, is there a blog post that talks about that topic? Great, redirect it to there, right? If, it do, if there isn't a blog post, then the next most similar page, you'd probably look to say, maybe it's the blog homepage because it was a blog and these are all blogs. Maybe that's going to be it. Or maybe actually you might say, well, this blog post was actually more like a services page. It talked all about all of the services the company did. In that case, then redirect it to the services. But you're just thinking about what's the next most similar page if there isn't an equivalent. Does that, does that make sense, Matt? Yeah, definitely. And is there any negativity to the scale of that? So if we have 200 old URLs, let's just say for argument's sake, there isn't a relevant content page elsewhere so we're gonna have 200 old urls pointing at the blog home the blog landing page is there any negativity i mean i know there will be some traffic on those old urls but she's the client is apparently picking the 30 most successful blog articles but is there a negativity to pointing 200 urls to one one page yeah i, I guess it's don't think about it in terms of negativity like google's gonna go well this is bad practice and therefore in a way kind of like penalize you it's just that you're um you're not going to get the you're not going to get the value you would have got if you'd have redirected it to a blog post the same blog post on the new site right so the way the reason that happens is this is the way google explain it if you do a redirect from an old page to a new page like you know the blog on the old site to the blog on the new site and they're identical and Google will know they're identical. And what it does is within that 301 redirect, it will pass over like 99% of the SEO value, right? It goes, right, you can have pretty much all of the SEO value the old page used to have. The further away that page you're redirecting to, so because you don't have the new blog page on the new, the, the blog page on the new site, the, 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 the less likely, the less similar the page you're redirecting to, Google's going to drop the amount of SEO value it passes over. So if it's an exact duplicate, you'll get like 99%. You never get 100% because it's a redirect. But if it's not similar at all, you might get 5% or 0% of the SEO value. So if you're going to do that for 200 odd blog posts and there aren't going to be equivalent pages, then that's 200 pages worth of SEO value where you're only going to retain, let's say, 10, 15, 5% of the SEO value they had. So that's a big chunk of your SEO value you got. Um, that's, that's the kind of the worry bit. And this is my worry about you guys is I, I get why they're kind of doing it, but there is a lot of SEO value that the website's going to lose because of that. Yeah. I think that comes down to, I'm probably sure everyone on the call today could, um, could talk about this at length, but it just comes down to clients and their complete lack of understanding of certain things. I think their, their previous agency were weak designers, but very strong on SEO. So they have really good ranking. Um, and there'll be a lot of reasons, a lot of hard work that's gone into that. Um, and then migrating across and just making casual decisions like they're going to kill 200 blog articles without realizing the potential of what that could do for the, for the site. Yeah. 100%, so. 100%. And I think as an agency, and I'm sure what you try to do is the only thing we can do or you can do in that scenario is just tell them what the impact's going to be. 
in, in as strong a terms as you can. You can say, fine, we can do this, but this is the impact it's going to be. And, and this is a fact, you know, we are going to lose, you know, 200 pages worth of SEO value. Uh, I'm expecting this is going to reduce our SEO. You know, we're going to lose the traffic from these. You can go into GA, you can look at how much traffic those, you know, things, those blogs have got and say, you know, I think we're going to lose this. And as long as you've kind of told them that, then that's, that's all you can do. That's yeah. Really okay. Forward. Brilliant. Thank you. No worries. Um, okay, cool. So let's move on to the next bit then. So I guess you've now got this big list of URLs, right, in a spreadsheet, right? Oh, I think actually there was a question, wasn't there? If we go back to here. Uh, is there an easy way to remove duplicate URLs in Excel? Yeah, there's, um, I don't use Excel. I use Google Sheets. But I remember in Excel, there is a, in the menu at the top, there is a function somewhere in one of the options that says remove duplicates. So you highlight your column A, right? It's got all your URLs and then you click remove duplicates and it will remove all the duplicates. Um, yeah, there's a function built into Excel. In Google Sheets, there isn't, I don't think. So you have to do, you have to do like your own, uh, your own formula, but just Google it. Just like Google how to remove duplicates in Excel or in Google Sheets and you'll get it. Oh yeah, Fred, Sheets. Yeah, yeah, just Google it. There isn't, a, they haven't got a function built into it like Excel does, which is really annoying. Uh, but if you Google someone, some wizards done like a, a blog post or a guide or a forum post that shows you how to do that. Okay, so you've got a cleaned up list of all your URLs from these four steps, right? What you want to do now is correct a, a redirect map sheet where you've got in column A, all the old URLs, right? So I'll just grab this from online, but all the old URLs, Column B, what redirect you want. So 301, like I say, 99.99% of all situations, you want to do 301. And then in the final column, where that redirect needs to go to. So what the new URL is going to be. The reason you're doing this is because you can either A, give it to your web developer, your web designer, so they can implement the redirects at the server level or in the HT access file. Um, or B, so that if you're doing it yourself, like perhaps you know, you're using like one of WordPress's redirect uh, plugins or um, Shopify's got really nice redirect uh, like feature within it. You know, you, you know exactly the redirects you need to do when, you know, when the site goes live. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what we call one-to-one -one redirect mapping. So you're redirecting every single URL from the old URL to the new URL. What you can do for it is a bit more an advanced way. You can do like a one-to-many redirect. And these are called redirect rules. Um, so if you're finding that actually you're redirecting a lot of URLs where the URLs kind of look exactly the same, but there's one bit that's changed. So for example, if you're changing your top level domain, right? So if you're just changing, you know, from hikeseo.co to hikeseo.tv, but every, every other part of the URL is the same, like everything after the forward slash is the same, then you just need to create a redirect rule that says, you know, for any old URL that has .co, redirect it to its equivalent with .tv in it. Um, so that's one example. Or if let's say you're changing the, the name of a folder. So let's say you're an e-commerce site and the folder used to be my products forward slash product one. But actually you just change the name of the folder. So actually the folder now just says products, but then everything after it, so e.g. the one is exactly the same. Then you can just create a redirect rule. Um, you can do this typically in the HT access file, if anyone kind of knows that, if a bit more technical, if not, speak to your web developers, um, where it will just, you know, redirect anything that has that to anything that has that. And then that then saves you having to do that one-to-one -one redirect where you do it 100 times 100 products. You just do one redirect rule and it does it for all of them. So yeah, that's kind of um, a good way to do redirects um, a bit faster if you can. Some websites you just can't, right? Because there isn't a pattern that you see that you can create a rule for. This is really, really important. So as I said, you know, the most important thing with migrations is redirect mapping, redirect mapping, redirect mapping. If you've got the, if you've, if you've got the new site on staging somewhere on a staging domain, upload the redirects onto the staging domain, uh, get your web developers to do it, however to do it, and then test all the redirects, right? Because the redirects should work. If they've been added to the staging domain, then they should work. So for example, See if staging.com slash old URL. So the old URL you're going to be redirecting redirects to staging.com forward slash new URL. Because that what that'll mean is that that redirects in place, which means when you change staging you know, .com to hike.com, which is like our website or whatever, then you know it will work. 
because it's worked on staging. So that's really, really important. Uh, if you can do that, do that, because you'll want to be checking these redirects before go live. Okay, any questions, any other questions on the redirect mapping before we move on? Feel free to shout out or drop a message in the chat. No, okay. Actually, I had one, sorry, Andy. Um, if, if you've picked up a site where somebody has done a bad migration and you've got lots of broken redirects, how long can you leave it before you can do this sort of work to, to, to address any lost traffic? Yeah, uh, million dollar question. Um, so going, talking from previous experience, you don't have very long. You don't have very long at all. You know, I'd say you have like a month tops really in a way. Um, and this is a kind of simple reason for that, right? If Google's going to go to those, so you launch a site, change the URLs, Google doesn't know immediately, right? So it tries to crawl all the old URLs. Go to the old URLs, it tries to crawl them. And if redirects weren't added, right, then it just goes to a 404 page. And it goes, ah, oh, this page 404s. That's a shame, you know, <laughs> like, oh, I don't know what to do with the SEO value. I'm not going to let it rank, whatever. And then, and then it won't keep trying to recrawl that URL forever. So if you don't implement a redirect in the first month or so, it's only going to recrawl that URL maybe a couple of times before it goes, look, I've recrawled this twice. Every time I go to it, it 404s. Google's going to go, I'm not going to keep trying to recrawl this page. Right? So Google's not going to keep mm -hmm. going. But even if you had a redirect like two months later, three months later, the problem you're going to have is that Google's never going to go to that old URL to see the redirect and to pass over that SEO value. So you just kind of lose it. So, okay. um, yeah, I mean, it's probably, it's worth a test. I mean, how long has it been, Cam, since the, the migration? Uh, it's been about three months. We've picked up this client and, uh, you know, I had a look at the exactly what you're just saying at the traffic and I can see where they've had the swap over and there's this massive drop off. Um, I'm still seeing traffic though, or granted not from Google to those old URLs. So traffic's coming from somewhere. Um, a lot of them are blog posts. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, it, there's no harm in trying it, right? What's the worst that could happen? Like implement the totally. And yeah, I'll actually show you one way in a bit, one way that you, you can try and force Google's hands to recall those old URLs. And um, we'll get on to that towards the end of the webinar. Okay, cool. Keep you engaged. Uh, right, okay. Content migration. So this is, what, what I mean by content migration is you're moving from an old site to a new site, moving the content over. You know, like, is the content staying the same? Are you going to update the pages? Are you bringing in new pages? Are you rewriting the copy so it's nicer, it's, it's better, it's more... Um, CRO friendly, you know, it's going to convert that, all of that stuff, right? That's, a, that's what we call a content migration, changing the content significantly. Now, my first tip um, is to try not to rock the boat too much. Um, this is something that Google say, not in those words, uh, but something that Google say is, if you're going to do a migration, like a big migration, try not to change everything at once. So if you're changing all the URLs, like you're moving from one domain to a new domain, or you're just changing all the URLs anyway, that's quite a lot for Google to handle, right? It's got to recall your site, it's got to find all those redirects. It has to reprocess everything in regards to your website to understand where you should rank. It's quite a lot for Google to do. If you're then adding into the mix that not only are you changing the URLs, the domain name, all of this, but actually you're changing the page structure, you're rewriting the copy, you know, you're, you're doing all of that stuff as well then that's two things for Google to reprocess and work out where you should rank. And what that can mean is that that's quite a lot, and it can mean that you fluctuate more than you would do if you just did one at a time. Now, in the majority of cases, you, you probably listen to it Andy, I, you know, I get it, but we can't just do one thing and then do the next thing. And that's fine. You know, like if you're working with a client or even your own website, you want to do both at once, right? But if you can, it's just my little tip, if you can, try to separate the parts of the migration, try to stagger them um, so that there's not too much for Google to have to reprocess. And that's a tip that comes straight from Google. All right, next. Now let's go through the uh, four parts of content migration, so what to do. So my first recommendation is 
just make sure you can at first, you don't have to do it eventually, but just try not to rock the boat too much. Keep your metadata the same or the same-ish as much as possible. So your page titles and your meta descriptions, at least, you know, the things that appear in Google search, try to keep them the same until the site's maybe a month old. Then if you want to update your metadata, change your keyword focus, fine. But again, it's just a way to kind of not rock the boat too much if you're doing a big migration. Try and keep that the same. Uh, next, your page copy. So, you know, uh, Matt, you're talking about, you know, change everything. That's fine. If you can, again, it depends what the brief was from the client. So it doesn't sound like you're not going to be able to do this. But as a general, try not to change the page copy too much. Um, or if you are, you know, perhaps keep certain elements of it the same. Because again, the more you're doing changing the copy, the more you're rocking the boat. Number three, purging. So um, if you do want to do a bit of a cleanse, and I think this is a good thing to do for everyone to do, irrelevant of doing a migration or not, I think maybe something to think about doing every year or so, if you're doing active SEO anyway, is to think about doing a bit of a content purge, especially with blog posts. If you've got a blog that's, or your client's got a blog that's like five, 10 years old, there'll be some crap on there, right? Excuse me, French. Um, there'll be some, some old blog posts on there that actually don't need to carry across because... Blog posts, if they're poor quality, what we call thin content, they can be detrimental to your SEO. So you might want to think about actually removing them. Because I've had some instances in the past, I've worked with clients, and just by removing old content that was poor quality, that was wasting Google budget, um, actually improved the SEO of all the other pages. Because suddenly Google didn't see all this rubbish, it just had a much cleaner, you had a much better, cleaner profile. So a way to do that, go into Google Analytics, Look at the pages that received. I've put no clicks there, but Google Analytics doesn't show you no clicks. It just shows you um, pages that have had at least one click. So go in there, have a look, find the blog post. You know, say it's like six months. If a blog post has had like one visit in six months from organic landing pages, then Google doesn't like it, right? If it's had less than six visits, Google probably doesn't like it. That's one visit a month. That's the kind of content you could think about, you know, doing something with. Use Google Search Console as well. And what they'll do is they'll show you pages that have had, no, that, that have had little clicks or little impressions. You probably still want to go in your blog and find the ones that Google Analytics haven't sent any traffic to because they're the ones you definitely will probably want to purge. And then what do you do with them? So if you've got this content, you know, uh, like, like with Matt, what do you do with it? Well, you've got kind of four options. One, you can improve it. So you can look at it and go, oh, do you know what? Yeah, this blog post isn't the best. Maybe I could rewrite it. I could improve it. Um, you could delete it probably the most common one, delete and redirect. So delete it, redirect it to the most equivalent. One thing you can do actually, redirects aren't always that important if Google doesn't like a page anyway, especially if it's only a few, if you're not doing it en masse, um, then you can do that. Um, or what you can do is you can look to combine, combine blog posts. You know, I always say this, if you've got two blog posts that are 200 words each, they're quite clean content, but they're around a similar topic, just combine them into one blog post. It makes them a much more meatier, healthier blog post. So. That's kind of what to do around content migration. Any questions on that before we move on to Google properties? No? Okay, cool. Well, look, feel free to jump in or drop a message um, in the chat box at any point. Next, Google properties. So this is very important. What to do um, with your Google properties when you migrate. And this is all of this really, guys. Um, is just when you're changing your top level domain name, you know. So if you have a look at my this bit here, canva.com, right? So if you were changing that, if they were changing it to canvadesign.com or canva.tv or canva. whatever it may be, this part of the URL, the, the top level domain, um, that this is kind of what's most relevant for. So things you need to think about. You've got four, I've got four Google tools here that you need to think about. So Google My Business, the first one. You'll want to update the website URL that's in Google My Business. So you can do that in Hike, right? You head over to the local bit, uh, the listing manager here. You can go down here to the website URL. You know, so if we were changing from hikeseo.co to hikeseo.com, then you can do that. Click Save Changes, and immediately it's, it's added it. So think about Google My Business. Then what you'll also need to do is go through your directories, your citations. Oh, okay. You'll have to go through all of your citations um to update the url the citations do that's kind of lo lower priority but do think about that 
Next, Google Analytics. Head over to Google Analytics. You need to update property and view settings and any goals. So let's head over to GA. So if you go to the bottom left down here, you've got admin. Then here, property settings. Click on property settings. You have the default URL. So you'll need to change that to whatever the new URL is. Over here, view settings, same thing. You'll need to change the URL there. And then just down here, goals. So any goals that you've got set up, which is a destination goal, which is a, a URL, you'll want to update that as well if the URL has changed. So that's also relevant for people that aren't changing the top level domain, but are changing perhaps just their URL structure afterwards. So that's what you need to do in GA. Next, Google Search Console. So in Search Console, you'll want to set up a, a new profile for your new domain. So our website is hikeseo.co. If you move to hikeseo.com, set up a new profile for hikeseo.com and you need to verify it in the usual ways of doing it. If you don't know how to do that, I'm sure everyone here has done that in the past. Or if not, just Google it, how to verify Search Console. Google have got really good guidance on it as well. But then what you'll want to do, and this is very important, Google have this feature here called the change of address tool. So if you're moving your site from one domain to another, really, really important bit this everyone. And um, if you are moving your website from one to another, use Google's um, change of address tool. Um, this is just a guide here. Um, yeah, this is a guide that kind of tells you how to do it. There you go. There's a link to the tool here. Da, da, da. And it's really simple. So you set the properties, let's say, uh, um, and then you select the new site. So you need to verify both of them. And then what you can do is you can use this tool to say, hey, Google, this domain, highcastheer.co, is moving over to this one. And that's one of the best ways, apart from redirects and all of that jazz, to tell Google you're changing address. So yes, really, really important thing to do that if you're changing your top level domain. Um, and then next one, and final one, Google Tag Manager. So in Google Tag Manager, you'll need to update the host name and also any triggers and tags that contain a URL because obviously you've changed the URL in there, but I won't go into detail on that one. It's not as SEO focused, but yeah, try not to forget about Google Tag Manager if you're using that as well. Cool, any questions on Google properties before we move on? No? None from me. Okay, cool, thank you very no. much. Not a question on Google properties, but just one thing. Will the recording of this session be, be available or the document yeah. that you're running through? Yeah, 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 the recording Perfect. will be available. So I'll send out the recording tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I was making notes, but they were getting scruffier as I'm going. So that was, uh, <laughs> that was the reason why. Yeah, no worries. And look, actually, actually, this is a good question. I always send out the recording, but I never send out the slides. Like, is that something that people would find quite, sometimes you don't want to watch it. No, no, yes, please. Yeah, I would actually prefer the slides over the recording, to be honest, because it gives me something to follow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that would be great. All right. Consider it done. Moving forwards, I'll share the slides as well, everyone. So you've got that as well. Awesome. Thank you for feedback, Russ. Um, right, post-migration. So final bit, right? You've done your migration. You've done everything I've told you to do. You're like, Andy, I've done it all. It's going to be an absolute success. I can just sit back and relax now. Uh, afraid not, right? You don't want to do that because the work, your work is not yet done. You've still got a little bit more work to do. And this is, if anything, the most important bit, right? Because uh, it's gone live. You know, like you need to make sure that everything, your SEO traffic is doing what we expect it to do, which we'll come on to. So first off, robots.txt. Um, now, hopefully, <laughs> With a state, if you've got the website on a staging domain, you've stopped Google from indexing that staging site because if you haven't, then you're creating duplicate content. A um, couple of ways that you can stop Google from indexing the staging domain is what some people do is they'll put up like a username and password. You know, you jump on a page at what mode will pop up saying username and password. Google can't get past that, so that's perfect. Another way people do it, and commonly, is they'll do it in the robots.txt. So. Um, we, I'll tell you a story. I used to head up global SEO for Claire's Accessories, which is like a, if anyone's got any daughters, they'll know exactly what Claire's Accessories is, right? It's a, uh, a shop where they sell kids' accessories, but they're, they're online presence pretty big. So I used to head up their SEO. 
Um, and we did a migration for them from an old site to a new site, a CMS, but it also changed all of the URLs and their domains. Um, so it was a big, big move, right? Planned it for months and months and months. And there was one thing that I and the developers kind of overlooked, which was the way in which we stopped Google from going to the, for one of the websites, stop Google from going to those sites was we added on the robots.txt for that staging domain, we added a knowing disallow all URLs. So if Google ever found that staging domain, it would go to the robots.txt and it'd see disallow and it'd go, right, I won't go to this. Now, what the developers did was when the new site was pushed live, they pushed that same robots.txt onto the new site, which means the new site was live, beautiful, really good. We've done all the redirects and everything we had to do. But when Google went to go to that website, it went to the robots of TXT that said, don't go to this website. Just, just ignore it, move on. And what it meant was just, it wasn't being indexed. No traffic was going to, we lost all our SEO rankings. It was absolute nightmare. So learn from my mistakes. Um, when you push it live, if you did use the robots.txt to stop Google from indexing the staging domain, make sure that robots.txt hasn't been pushed over to the live site. Also, just make sure that robots.txt um, is relevant for the new website as well. So if you've changed URLs, for example, you might want to review your robots.txt to make sure it uses new URLs. Like the sitemap might be on a different URL, probably will be if it's a new, new uh, top level domain you're using, which brings me nicely onto the second part, XML sitemaps. So the new site's launched. Um, what you want to do now, update your XML sitemaps. Now, if you're using a CMS like WordPress, any of the bigger ones, right, then they're going to automatically create the XML sitemap. So head over to Search Console. I'll show you here. Head over to Search Console. Go over here under Index. Go to Sitemaps. Upload your new sitemap. Press Submit. First thing to do, right? And that's really, really useful because you're telling Google straight away, hey, Google, here's all my new URLs. So Google can then go crawl, find all those new URLs. Beautiful. Um, can you wait for URLs one by Italy? Brilliant. Always happens. Shouldn't, shouldn't shout on Google. Cool. Um, right. But a tip, I think Cam, it's relevant for you, right? Mentioned earlier about one thing that you can do. So a real nice thing that you can do, right? When you move URLs, move, yeah. So you're doing a migration, you're changing URLs. The sitemap's got all the new URLs, right? But it hasn't got the old URLs. And you might think, well, that's fine. But actually, if you can create a custom sitemap, can't do this with everything, uh, with all CMSs, create a custom sitemap with all the old URLs in it, as many as you can. Because that means that Google is going to be forced to go to those old URLs and crawl them because it's in the sitemap. Um, and that's one way that, A, you can make sure that Google's seeing the redirects from all those old URLs to new URLs. But two, force Google uh, retrospectively, like after the fact, um, to go to old URLs. So Cam, that's a little tip for you. If you're going to do the clever now, you want to visit those old URLs, Cam, create a custom XML sitemap and upload it into Search Console. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's great. That makes really good sense. Okay, great stuff. Um, okay, cool. So you've done the robots.txt, you've uploaded your XML sitemap, made it. Now, very importantly, check all your redirects. So you screaming frog again, put all those old URLs. So you remember before we made that big list, if we go up here, your you URL mapping, right? You've got this. You've got all those old URLs in a big Google sheet or an XML sitemap. Grab all of those URLs, go to, um, go to Screaming Frog, put them all in, run it, and make sure every single URL 301 redirects and 301 redirects to the page that you wanted it to go to. So that's how to check all of those. Next, performance. So you've done all of these, right? You've ticked every box, but hey, there's, there can always be something that's missed, something that someone's done, either yourself or someone else or a developer or the client or, or your teammates that impact stuff even after the fact. So keep a close eye on Google Analytics and Google Search Console the week afterwards, especially the first few days. Have a look. There's traffic falling off a cliff. Okay, great. Something's gone wrong. Revisit the whole process. Um, really, really important. You need to keep an eye. Go into search console. Is there any messages? Look at the coverage report. Look at the performance report. Is there anything that's happened that looks out of the ordinary? If so, you can then look to fix it, you know, before that first month's over. Like I was saying before with CAM, you've got about a month here, right, to fix anything that's not been done properly. But ideally, you want to do it before Google calls it the first time. So you've got a matter of days. So get it fixed. That's the way to check it. 
Okay, so managing expectations. What to expect? This is very important. You're doing a migration. How will it impact your SEO? So it all depends on the complexity of the migration. If you're changing the CMS, the content, and the URLs, it's very complex. If you're just changing the content, not so complex. If you're just changing the CMS, not so complex. You know, URLs are quite complex, but it depends on the complexity is what you can expect. But typically, this is what we see, right? So at first, a couple of months, maybe, month to two months, it's common to see a drop in keyword rankings and traffic. Because think about it, right? You're, you're changing all of your SEO. You know, you, you turn, you're changing loads of things for Google. So Google has to recalculate where you should rank in the search results. So that's why you commonly see like a 10, 20% drop, right? That's to be expected. So if this is for your own website, make sure that you understand that so you don't freak out and you tell your stakeholders. If it's for a client's website, manage their expectations, right? So look, it's common for us to see a drop in the first few months because we've changed a lot of stuff. However, what you want to see then, once Google's re-indexed the website, it's seen all of the redirects, that you, then your traffic will fairly stabilize. It won't continue to drop. And then finally, if you've done everything correctly, you've built an awesome new website, you've done awesome new SEO, you know, your conversion rate's higher, your content's better, you should then start to see your traffic at least return to its pre-migration levels. But if not, go above it, right? If you've done better SEO. So that's typically what to expect. Right, four minutes left. So re resources. I'm going to send out this, um, send out these slides, send out the videos. Don't worry about that. But just do a simple Google SEO migration checklist. I'm actually thinking of doing one for us guys. I'll get the team to do it. Hopefully, we're going to do it before this migrate before this webinar. But didn't have time. Um, a checklist. I mean, this this presentation is kind of a checklist, but it'd be nice to have it in a simple form. But there's loads of resources. Just Google SEO migration checklist. Right, great thing to do. Next, view Google's own migration guides. Like they're brilliant. Uh, let me show you. Because so many people have so many issues, Google actually brought out under their Search Central uh, website documentation on. You can see over here, right? What is a site move? Move a site without URL changes. So this is like your kind of your content, your CMS change with URL changes. Same. So there you go. Loads of information there. But then this one move a site with URL changes. So if you're changing the top level domain, if you're changing any of the internal URLs, whatever they may be, read this guide. Loads of good information. So definitely if you're doing migration, Cam, uh, Matt, have a read of this. We're spending, either yourself or a team member, spending a couple of hours going through this. And that everyone is everything. We've got a couple minutes left, so probably got time for one or two questions. Have oh, we got a chat message? Let me just have a quick uh, slides will be useful. John, yep, yeah, cool. Any final questions, everyone, before we jump off? Can I ask how much how, how much is it gonna excuse my French fuck up my SEO if I change from a local keyword a uh, local domain name with a um, local area in it to a, a national one? Um. If you do everything in the everything in the checklist there, everything in the slides, you should be all right. So an actual the actual domain name, adding keywords into the domain name doesn't really have the impact it used to, right? Five, 10 years ago, if I wanted to rank for Plumber London, if I had the URL Plumber London, I was quids in. Absolutely quids in, right? Probably wouldn't even have to do much SEO, I'll just rank. Um, it was kind of a way to gain the Google algorithm. So what Google did was they said, all right, fine, we'll, we'll just discount any value we used to place on keywords within domain names. So the fact that you've got your location in the domain name at the minute isn't having as big an impact on your local rankings as you probably think it is. Um, so by removing that, you know, remove, ch changing from Plumber London to Plumber.com, probably as long as I do everything else correctly, means I'm still gonna rank for Plumber London. As long as I've got good optimization, my, re my website's still relevant, and mentions London, I'm still going to rank for it, right? As long as I do everything else correct, you know, redirects, all that jazz. So I wouldn't worry if that's, is that, is that, am I getting the situation correct there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that makes no. sense. Good stuff. All right, guys. Well, yeah, thank you for uh, joining the webinar. Um, I'll fire out the slides in the recording tomorrow. Uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to use the live chat. And um, yeah, I hope you find it helpful.
All right, and thanks for the comments. Everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Really good. Brilliant. Cheers, matey. Thanks, Andy. Cheers. Thanks, Bye. Andy. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.